if you want to spice up your next live stream or maybe just your meeting with uh, your boss over Zoom, then I'm gonna show you how you can create something like this to add animated reactions or any animations to your video feed. It's quite easy to do using Arrive and OBS and uh, you can even create silly stuff like this. We use this during the Arrive live streams each Tuesday and it's a way that people can interact with us remotely during the live stream by enabling them to add these reactions. And uh, we also have unique animations for each person on the live stream. So see that live stream on Tuesday if you want to get some inspiration. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually configure an application such as this. You can either use this exact app or if you want to just take inspiration, you can build something yourself. Okay, so let's pull back the curtain and see how this application is configured and how you'd be able to use or create something similar yourself. Important to note that this is um, a demo of the app that we made for the Rive live stream that happens on Tuesdays. And we built it uh, purely just to show this off as a use case, but also to allow uh, our viewers to interact with us with an, an engaging and fun way. But um, the actual code is quite easy to understand, at least from like the just the application perspective part. So if you want and you are interested, you can go to the link in GitHub. There is instructions on how to run this locally and um, you can take it from there. Please reach out if you do have questions. This video is just gonna show you how it works uh, functionally and how you can configure OBS and your live stream so that it will actually work. So let's quickly demo the application that we made. There are two different parts to it. There's a macOS client, uh, which you see on the left. This is the app that the live streamer will use to connect and also configure the animations. And then on the right is the way that people can um, interact with those animations remotely. So these two are connected through a web server and viewers would get access to the link. Currently it's just on, hosted on localhost and um, through this, they'll be able to interact with you. Okay, so first off, let's explore setting up an animation. In this panel or this page, you can configure a custom animation that you want to display in your uh, live stream scenario. And uh, here you can see we have this bug and this bug is now continuously playing. And uh, the idea is that uh, you configure your Rive state machine in such a way that there is a trigger, something that someone can trigger remotely. So as an example, if we press demo, uh, each time you press demo, the, the bug will shoot. So if we actually just go back and let's connect to the server, you can see now the animation is constantly playing and um, Gordon is connected and we can trigger the spatial animation remotely. And there is also these interactions. So uh, just as an extra feature that we added so that people can add these reactions while we live stream. Uh, so depending on the type of animation you want to set up, you may want something that's on the screen constantly, or you may want something that only shows up when the uh, animation is triggered. As an alternative, I have another example here. Uh, let's go to set up my animation. And just, just gonna drag in a new file. And this that is the deal with it. So now if we go back, connect, you can see Gordon is connected again and triggering the special animation now shows that. Okay, so that is the overview for the application. Let's actually see how we can configure OBS or any other live streaming tool that supports this capabilities and see how we can set up the application so that it overlays on your video feed. And for that, um, you would need uh, to install OBS as that's the example app that we'll use. And you can see that I already have a configuration set up here, but we're gonna start from scratch. There are two things here, there's scenes and sources, and a scene comprises of multiple sources. And as you can see, we have a video capture and a screen capture. But let's start from scratch, and I'm just gonna say that this is a sample screen. And now there's no sources added, so you can no longer see anything uh, in the actual output. So let's add a new source and we're gonna say video capture device and we'll leave the default name and I'm gonna select my video feed, which is this Camlink 4K. And, um, and now you can see I'm back on screen. And 
next we'll add a screen capture and default name. Now this is the uh, interesting part because the derive overlay app has a transparent window, we can just share that uh, application window and because it's transparent, it will only show the derive animations. So what you need to do is select the method, application capture, and then select the correct application. So in this instance, it is named derive overlay app and press okay. And as you can see, it's currently showing the login screen uh, over here or the home screen. And that's not exactly what we want. Uh, we want uh, it to show the connect page. But while this page is up, let's just configure it so that it's actually the correct size. And uh, as you can see, it's way too big currently. And you can do that by just dragging out these red handles. Okay, so that seems close to uh, the correct size. It uh, doesn't need to be perfect right now. You can obviously make it perfect for your uh, example. So now if we connect, you can see it's now a transparent window and we can see what's below this. And in OBS, you can see that we're seeing still a little bit too much. We can see that it's connected as Gordon. We obviously want to hide that. So now we just drag it out. And uh, as you can see, there is this white border and that's just there for convenience so that you can uh, align your animation correctly or align your window correctly. Okay, so that seems like it's aligned well enough and I'm just gonna go back to the Arrive Overlay app and say hide border. And now we are entirely in OBS. And if we start uh, demoing some of these reactions, you can see it's showing over the entire uh, window or at least the, uh, the OBS screen as well. So as you can see, it's basically duplicating the animations now. So the final step for you would be to actually use the uh, output you get from OBS. And to do that, you would need to start a virtual camera. You might need to configure some permissions for this the first time that you do this, and you can visit OBS's website for details on how to do that. Um, I believe it's just enabling screen sharing uh, or a screen capture to allow that. So the Final step, or final step to do is just press start virtual camera. But before you do that, just go to settings. And okay, it's not selecting because the overlay app is uh, overlaying it. <laughs> just select the settings and then you select the correct output. So we want to output the entire scene, not just a single source. So select scene and then select the sample scene, uh, which we just made, press okay and then start virtual camera. And now if you were to select a different uh, video feed, um, you should be able, or if you start like Google Meet or something like that, you should be able to see it. So let's actually demo that. Okay, so here we are in Google Meet. I'm just gonna start a new meeting. And uh, it's using my Mac uh, camera. That's not what we want. So let's go to settings, video, and select OBS virtual camera. And here we have the OBS virtual cameras, uh, cool. And let's go to live uh, arrive overlay and just do some demo reactions and demo animation. And now you can see it's, it's in Google Meet as well. Oops.